So what is a plant light or a grow light? And what makes a plant light a plant light or a grow light a grow light? We're gonna talk about that in this video coming up. So for those of you who have been following my channel, this might look all very different to you. That's because I've never done a video in this particular location. This is my new studio. Now this room did not start out as my studio. I had no intentions on making it a studio. Many years ago, I built this as a spare room or a temporary room uh, just for extra furniture for when my girlfriend moved in, a place the cats can go into and kind of hang out. And then it kind of turns into a theater room. And then from there, it turned into a workout room, which never really got used. And now it's a studio. So this is still a work in progress. If you have any suggestions about maybe changing some stuff up here, I don't know, maybe you don't like something, just leave a comment below and I will consider it. Without further ado, we're gonna talk about the subject of this video and that is plant lights or grow lights. Now, in order to understand what a grow light is and where the term came from, we have to kind of look back to the past. Now, a long time ago, we had incandescent light bulbs. It wasn't really that long ago, but incandescent lights. Now I'm not talking about in this video, I'm not going to talk about HID lighting. So no high pressure sodium or metal halide. That is a whole separate subject for people who like to grow marrow pickles. We're going to talk about today just uh, a very baseline subject here. The, the basis where this all starts from is incandescent lights. Now you couldn't really grow plants with incandescent lights, at least not very well. They're terrible. And by the way, if, if you're growing with an incandescent light, then you need to stop growing anything because you're doing it wrong. You need to choose something that works better, more efficient, puts off less heat. I'm not gonna get into all the details, but stop using incandescent bulbs if you're growing anything with them, stop. A long time ago, you had incandescent bulbs that were modified and modification by that, I mean, they were just coated with a, a, a coating on them, whether it was enamel or some kind of a phosphor with enamel, I don't really know exactly, but that's not the point. It was like a bluish kind of a coating on them. And what that does is it kind of uh, breaks up the spectrum to be more of a, a broader spectrum rather than just, you know, mostly uh, in, the, in the red spectrum because that's what incandescent bulbs put out is a very heavy amount of red light, but also a ton of heat. So like far infrared, basically just heat. It's a, it's a whole waste of energy. Don't, don't bother with them. I think I said that already. Back a long time ago when they made those lights, they made them for growing plants so they can work better. But along came the fluorescent light and the fluorescent light uh, was much better for growing plants because it was much more efficient for one. It put off a lot more light in light, a lot more energy in light versus heat. Um, it also could be made to have a better, broader spectrum. So in order to understand what that means, a broader or a full spectrum, uh, we have to talk about what this is. And this is a spectroscope, a very cheap spectroscope. Uh, or you can say a cheap spectrometer. It's not really a meter though. It's just basically something you look through, you aim it at your light source and you'll see it breaks up into kind of a rainbow. And there's a little scale in there and it kind of shows you uh, what the spectrum looks like. It works, it works very well. I mean, you can't really pinpoint particular wavelengths, but you can see if the spectrum is uniform. Now by that, in order to understand that, what I did is um, I looked at a fluorescent light that's in my basement it's so my workshop, it's a T12 four foot long tube. And if you point it right at the fluorescent tube, I'll throw up a picture here up on the screen. You can see when you're looking through it, you can see that you get these little bands, these um, uh, very sharp bands in particular colors. And that shows you right there that it is not a broad or full spectrum. Even though the light looks white to your eye, it is not a white light. Well, it is a white light to your eye, I guess, but it's not a, it's not a broad spectrum. It's not fully covering the spectrum. It's only covering particular wavelengths that when combined together appears to you as white. Now, I took the same spectroscope and I got a replacement tube and hooked up to the same ballast, the same light. And the, uh, the LED replacement tube, it's the same length, it's still a T12 size. Uh, it's got a white coating on it, so it diffuses the light so you don't see the actual LEDs. It just kind of looks like a fluorescent tube. If I point the spectroscope, and here's a picture up here on the screen, you can see here clearly that you don't have those sharp bands in, the, in, that, in this whole spectrum, the visible spectrum. You're not seeing those sharp wavelengths. You're seeing a, a broad coverage, a very uniform looking spectrum. And that is what makes a grow light a grow light. It's basically just covering all the parts of the spectrum the plant can utilize 
and it just does it very well. Now, that's not saying fluorescent lights don't work and they're not a good option, but they do make fluorescent lights that are made particularly for growing because they use a certain phosphor coating on the inside of the glass that breaks up the spectrum better. Just going to the store and buying a regular old fluorescent bulb that's not really designated for plants, um, that's not really going to work quite as well. It'll work, just not as well. Uh, and then we kind of came into the, the LED phase. So as I just showed you on the screen about what, what that little, what it looked like through the spectroscope, um, you can see that it's a more uniform spectrum. And that's true for almost all white LEDs, although some LEDs are not going to be energy efficient, uh, as, as energy efficient as other LEDs. They all are, are, do a very good job of providing a broad spectrum and you don't have to go out and buy a light that is labeled as a grow light or a plant light. Now, people think because they see all these lights online, they're, they're, they're blurple, pink, purple lights, whatever, they think that that's a plant light and you need that particular light to grow plants. That's not true whatsoever. That is an old technology. Uh, it was designed a long time ago, I believe for NASA to grow stuff on the space station and to do it most efficiently using LED lights. That is a whole different thing and that is, is kind of confusing people. All you need is a white light. And particularly, you, just, you, you can go to the store and just get uh, a regular LED light, whether it be the tube or the spotlights, uh, regular house lights, they all are going to work. Now, there is some other, I probably need to elaborate that a little more. You can't just go out and get one single light and expect to grow this big, tall plant. It's just not going to happen. You need a certain amount of light, a certain amount of intensity for it to actually work out. Um, that's, that's a different subject probably for a different video. I've talked about this in other videos anyways. But, um, yeah, you can't really just go get one little tiny bulb and expect to grow a big plant with it. It's just not going to work out that way. You have to tailor what you're using for, for what you're growing. So you have to kind of adapt to what your needs are. So you might need to buy several lights, hook them up on an array, a panel, whatever. Um, not really going to talk about that in this video as far as building your own lights and nothing like that. What I'm saying is that these days you can pretty much just get a white LED light and slap a little name on it and call it a grow light because it's going to grow plants just fine. Now there are certain other options out there when you actually go online and you buy uh, something labeled as a grow light. Yes, there are uh, there are tuned spectrum lights. They, they use different types of white LEDs, uh, different um, variations of them. They might use a lot of red LEDs in there as well. And those are tailored for growing, usually larger plants and larger grows and grow tents, stuff like that. And this is more for the Mara pickle grower. So, you know, it doesn't mean that if you don't buy that light, you can't grow plants at all uh, of any type. That's, that's just not the case. Um, you don't have to get a light labeled as a grow light. These days, grow lights are basically lights designed for specific needs, as in people want the highest yield when they're growing like flowers. So that doesn't mean that you can't go use another light and, and that's not labeled as a grow light and think you're gonna get very poor growth or, or poor yield. Um, that might be the case, you know, but there's, there isn't really much of a, a need to go out and buy a grow light in particular uh, that costs, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars uh, when you're just looking to grow some regular house plants if it's not Mara pickles. So you can go out and just get regular like LED replacement fluorescent tubes like I showed in this video, and you can see that you will get very decent plant growth. It's not, it's not actually probably the most energy efficient way because there's a lot of diodes that grow that grow lights use that are high energy efficiency which means that it just puts out more light versus heat um, so if you were to buy like a tube like that a fluorescent tube whether it be a t5 t8 t12 replacement when it's an led it may not use the best leds out there and it may they may be using more energy and putting it off more energy and heat rather than light so it's just not efficient but that doesn't mean it doesn't work um, here, I actually have to kind of demonstrate one thing here. If I take this light and turn this on, this is the blue light. Or, um, oh, I got it backwards. That's green. Let's change that up there. This is the blue light here. Could this be used as a grow light? Nah, not really. I wouldn't even attempt to do that. Well, what if we combine the red light with it? Okay, so you see, you see these blurple lights. It's just red and blue diodes in a certain ratio. 
okay, well now I can grow plants, right? No, not really. First of all, that wouldn't be enough intensity. You know, you can't just go out and buy these party bulbs and expect to grow plants with them. I mean, if you put them close enough, yeah, maybe. But the idea here is that, um, you know, you think you need just red, you need, you need red and blue light to grow plants. Well, if I add green light, everyone knows if you add all three colors together, you basically get white light. Well, like I said earlier in this video, white light is is not necessarily what it appears. To your eye, it looks white, but that's just because there's certain colors combined to make it look that way. It, there could be missing other wavelengths of light. The point here is that what I'm getting at is this blue LED inside here, these are different kind of diodes. These are the ones that are the filament based, which are little tiny little diodes within in that little filament they put in there. Um, but anyways, the idea here is this blue light here, the blue LED is not phosphor coated. The diode itself is putting out blue light in a very specific wavelength. Um, about 99% of the light coming out of this is in one particular wavelength and the other like 1% is just a different a different wavelength within the blue part of the spectrum. Uh, the red one here though is a phosphor coating. You, you actually see there's an orange color to it that is a phosphor coating and that is basically a kind of like fluorescing if you will. And that is putting out actually a broader part of the red spectrum. It's putting out a more full part of the spectrum. It's not putting out red light in one particular wavelength. It's a, uh, a wider band. There's more wavelengths. The same thing with the green LED as a blue LED is a one particular wavelength. So if you were to make a grow light and you were to use one particular wavelength, you know, like 532 nanometer for the green or something like that, um, or, you know, 400 something for the blue. And then in the red also you, ha you have anything from, you know, uh, I don't know, 600 to 700 or something like that. That's not a very, that's not a complete spectrum. You're, you're missing a lot, a lot of wavelengths. Uh, plants, when they grow, they actually use um, all parts of the spectrum and they use the spectrum in a way that's very different than what you think. It's not like you can just put pinpoint parts of the spectrum into the plant. Uh, plants grow differently when you give them a combination of different parts of the spectrum. So like green light here alone doesn't really grow plants. Uh, it, it is used in, in the um, chlorophyll production process or the photosynthesis. It is utilized, but it's utilized when it's combined with other parts of the spectrum. I'm not going to get into the full details, but like if you can, if you put red light on a plant, you know, it's not going to grow very well with just red light. It's going to grow very weird. If you put just blue light on a plant, it's going to grow very weird. If you combine these together, though, then it's going to grow a lot better and more probably a little more normally than it would with just individual uh, colors of light. And it's the same thing with other wavelengths. So although this looks blue to you, it's not necessarily uh, blue because you could have a blue light that, um, or a blue light source, I should say, that has a more uniform part of the spectrum and you got other wavelengths mixed in and plants utilize very specific wavelengths within that part of the spectrum. So I hope I didn't lose anybody on that, but that's kind of what how grow lights came to be, the, the term grow light. It started out as an incandescent light that was basically covered with something to make it more uh, useful for growing plants, so that would just work better. And then we had fluorescent lights that had a different phosphor coating on the inside of them that was used for uh, a more uniform spectrum. And then nowadays we have LEDs, and they started you know making grow lights with the, with the red and the blue because it was more efficient at the time. Uh, and right now, the efficiency of white light versus just using a red and blue light uh, is almost neck and neck. So there really isn't any need to use blurple lights anymore if you're just going for efficiency. That has nothing to do with the, the, the how, how well the plant grows. And a matter of fact, I've done a lot of videos. I've done a lot of experiments using white light versus red blue light. I'll link them up here. But it's always come out better in almost every case to use just white light because it's got... It, as long as it's a broad spectrum, as I've discussed in this video, and, and covering all parts of the spectrum, uh, it will grow a plant a lot better than just using red and blue light, because usually those lights have to be tuned very specifically and very well for the blurple lights to actually work. The cheap ones, I wouldn't really go for that. The more expensive ones, where they actually put more work into designing them and really tailoring them to the needs to growing a plant, 
they work a little bit better. But for me, white light is the easiest choice because there's no, you don't have to guess at it. As long as it's a white LED, you can almost guarantee that it's going to work just fine and you don't need to have it, you don't need to go out and buy a light that's labeled as a grow light. Because like I said, LEDs these days uh, have that phosphor coating on, on there and they, it's not like white fluorescent lights. It has a broad spectrum on almost every case. And on that note, um, for anyone who has doesn't know, I've talked about this in other videos, but this blue LED right here, blue LEDs are white LEDs. So a white LED is, is just a blue LED that has a phosphor coating on it. Like if you took a fluorescent marker and color on a piece of white paper, and then you put a blue LED next to it, you would see a kind of fluoresce or a, or a black light, that purple looking light. Same thing, it would fluoresce. So that fluorescence, that color uh, with phosphors is put on a blue diode and that diode fluoresces. It looks like a white light, but in fact, it is a blue light source. And that's what makes it white light. And the phosphors do a very good job of making it a full or a broad spectrum. Uh, now there's different parts of that when you talk about like the Kelvin scale, you know, it's a little bit, one looks a bit more like a yellowish, one looks more whitish or bluish, that's just heavier on one side of the spectrum than the other. Um, and generally speaking for growing plants, um, for general purpose growing, around 3,500 Kelvin is right about where you'd want to be. 5,000 K, 6,000 K, stuff like that. People in the old school growing where they're growing mara pickles, you know, that's the old... Uh, old way of doing it where you would veg a plant, they would call it. You don't need to worry about that. For the home grower, for the average person, who the average hobbyist who's not growing mara pickles, um, you can just easily uh, use any kind of light. You don't need to worry about what veg is and what flower is and all that stuff. Just get a white light, white LED light, uh, as long as it's uh, somewhere around the range of, say, 3,000 to 4,000 K, perfectly fine. So, before we end this video here, if you've made it this far into this video, and I know I've been talking a lot and you're probably bored out of your mind by now, or maybe you found this informative, which is what the goal is, but if you want a grow light, I have been using, or I have used this light right here. This is a light I use in a couple other videos that I did my experiments with. This is a Relaydro, it is a white LED light, it is not very efficient, but it works for growing plants. And if you are interested in this, I'm doing a giveaway and all you have to do is leave a comment below saying you want the light. Now, as far as the shipping goes, I will ship it to you free if you are in the lower 48 states. If you are out of the country, I will pay $15 worth and you will pay the dividend of the shipping cost if you want this light that bad. So that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next one.